Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and today I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of using fake florals versus sugar florals on your wedding cake. Be sure to stick around till the end of the video because I'm going to give you a full tutorial on how to make super easy, fully edible, no styrofoam sugar florals. Brides often came to me with wanting to use their real florals on their wedding cake. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but with fake flowers, you don't have to worry about any imperfections, wilting, or possible water droplets going onto your cake. Sugar florals can get damaged really easily if they are not placed on the cake correctly. Fake flowers are really, really easy to go ahead and stab into your cake. For all of the flowers shown in this video, I only spent $5 on these fake florals and they'll look awesome on a three-tiered wedding cake. Making your own sugar flowers means that you guarantee that your flowers are going to look exactly how you want them. My whole fascination with amazing cakes is that everything on the cake is edible. Using fake flowers means you have to go through that extra step of making everything food safe. If you're new to making cakes, you might not know how to estimate how many flowers you'll actually need. And for me, nothing is worse than having to pop back to the store. Overall, I would personally choose to use sugar flowers on my cake, but there are definitely times that I have used fake flowers and it looks just as beautiful. It's really about how much time you have and how much time you would like to spend on DIYing your own wedding cake. Making sugar flowers can take a long time, but right now I'm going to show you how to make them pretty quickly and with or without cutters. Styrofoam balls are usually used to start a rose or flower, but today I am using lollipops because I want these to be fully edible through and through. It's really important that if you're using this method, you get a spherical lollipop, not the ones that are flat and circular. Making a rose is really, really easy, and I love this method using the lollipop because it gets nice and sticky, so your fondant sticks to it really nicely. As you saw there, I just took a small piece of round fondant, and then I used my balling tool to kind of make a petal shape. I'm going to continue to make petal shapes like this and use a tiny amount of water brushed onto the rose, and then that will allow me to adhere my petals really easily. You don't need any fancy cutters for this. All you really need to do is make petal shapes. And let's say your shape is too big and you have too much excess, just rip that excess off. And as long as the top is nicely aligned, it's going to turn out. Overlapping your petals about halfway is going to allow you to make a really beautiful rose shape. To make one of these roses probably takes me about six minutes. If you're finding that as you're placing your petals, it's not looking like a rose, you probably just need to keep going. At this stage, my rose still kind of looks like a lollipop with a few pieces of fondant on it. The trick to making the fondant look really realistic and like a rose is to get it nice and thin using that balling tool and then kind of using your fingers to curl out or curl in your petals, whatever you desire. I'm just using a wire cooling rack to hold my flowers, but if you don't have one of these, you can use lots of other things. You can use an egg carton that's elevated with a hole poked in it so that the stick goes right through. Just be creative, and it really doesn't have to be that fancy. This next rose technique is a lot quicker, but if I'm being honest, I actually prefer the first way that I do this rose, just in terms of the way that it ends up looking. So what you do is you roll that fondant really nice and thin, and then you use this cutter that kind of looks like a cloud. I've used this many times before in other videos. And then you go ahead and take that balling tool and thin out all of those petal edges.
because I want to adhere this rose to my lollipop, I'm going to put one or two petals down first just to start that inside bud of the rose. And then I'm going to add on that other part that I made. If things are ever falling apart, all you need to do is add a little bit of water. Now I'm taking that part that I cut out earlier and I'm literally just kind of rolling it like a cinnamon roll. To make the flower larger, just keep adding on all of these petals at once and keep rolling. As you can see with this technique, the petals end up a little bit tighter. Like I mentioned earlier, I like the way that I did the rose the first time a little bit more, but they both look very beautiful. And it's really nice to have different types of roses within the same bouquet on your cake because that's going to make things look really natural. It also depends on the look of your cake. If your cake is meant to be a little bit more modern and everything is supposed to be looking a little bit more perfect, then obviously you're going to want to stick with one rose technique. But for this cake, I want things to look like they're actually real flowers. I'm going to show you one more technique here. So instead of getting those ends really curly, I'm keeping things just really nice and thin, but allowing that smooth roundness to stay there. For this rose, we are not going to be placing any lollipop stick in it. It's going to be one that just sits freely on the cake. I think I'm going to be using these as filler flowers for the cake. You might have noticed that I'm using all white today for my flowers. Now, the flowers may stay white in the end, but I leave them this way so that I can choose to color them later. And if I don't end up using them all, then I can save them for another cake and make them whatever color I would like. Fondant flowers are much easier to paint and brush with petal dust once they are fully, fully dry. So that's why I have them on this rack. I'm gonna let them completely dry overnight before touching them with anything. Flowers on a cake are so timeless and classic, on wedding cakes and on many other types of cakes as well. A full DIY tutorial on three different types of wedding cakes will be coming at you this week, so be sure to watch out for that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of this, sweetie fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!